Italian food is not just all spaghetti and pizzas. And while Singapore has many great Italian restaurants, today we'll be finding hidden Italian spots that are really underrated that you should try. Food Finders! Oh, oh, hi there! <laughs> I'm so excited to be doing today's episode because I love Italian food and I've also been to 10 cities in Italy. I'm also wearing a hat from the Amalfi Coast today, looking like I'm uh, in Mamma Mia. Here I go again! Today we're going to be exploring cozy and under the radar uh, spots for Italian food. I actually looked up why Singaporeans love Italian food so much. It's because the price is pretty affordable. It's also kind of like fast, like on the go uh, kind of cuisine here. What's your favorite oh. Italian dish? My favorite is actually these open face sandwiches that you can get all around Italy. On top there's like prosciutto, there's different kinds of meat, fish, everything. And they're only one euro a pop. It's so cheap. So now we're gonna go check out our first spot of the day. Let's go. Wow, we are at Bella Italia Ristorante. This is a hole in a wall Italian restaurant. What they're known for is traditional Italian cuisine with a bit of like Singaporean flavors that matches the Singaporean palette. As we were walking into the restaurant, we noticed a lot of paintings and murals and art pieces all around on the wall, especially this one, which amazed me the most because it honestly looks like a piece of Monet painting. But actually, it's painted by Jackie Mack. He's a local artist artist who does a lot of wall murals for governments and the owner of the restaurant commissioned him to paint one for him. But first we're gonna try out this cote e vongole which is the fresh clams and mussels. Okay I'm gonna dip the garlic bread into the sauce because the sauce smells so good when it first came out. Mmm it's a pretty good piece of garlic bread. Definitely not being stingy on the garlic and the butter here. The white wine sauce is really really good with the clams. Okay I'll try one of the bigger mussels. Mmm, super juicy muscle. A lot of meat in there. It's a good appetizer to start with. It's probably one of the better mussels and clams um, that I've had, especially the sauce. Here's a little fun fact about pakeri. It's a huge round tube of pasta. I believe it originated from Campania in Italy. So this one comes with truffle sauce and pork sausage. I think the truffle is really different from regular truffle they would taste. The creaminess of the pasta sauce really gives the truffle taste more depth. Inside the creamy sauce is actually porcini mushrooms, which I think is what makes it so different. Okay, I do have a preference towards irregular shaped and thicker pastas instead of your typical, you know, spaghetti, linguine, string shaped pastas. I just feel like it's so, it's too close to noodles. It's something more unique like a ravioli or a noci brings out the flavor of the pasta more. Oh, it's so cute. It's like a tube. <laughs> like it expands and becomes this like really big and flat thing. I like that they give us this. Like, oh! I've never tried this kind of pasta here in Singapore. What I usually see is a squid ink pasta. That's what we're gonna move on to. There's a lot of squid ink in this pasta. My only worry about squid ink pasta is that I'm gonna look like I have black teeth after. Oh, That's, not just that. I get it all over my body. Like, like poop, you know? Really? Have you eaten squid ink or any squid ink risotto, whichever? The next day, your poop will be really this, like black marker, black, and then and then you wipe it with the toilet roll. Stop! Yeah. Stop! 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 I will let you know if yeah. my poop tomorrow will be try black. Mm -hmm. Why? All right, I'm gonna try the muscle. Mm. It says tomato marinara on the menu, which I was like, where's the tomato? Where's the marinara? But when I dig into the squid ink, or at least tried the mussel, I can really taste the tomato. My confusion sometimes with squid ink is that I'm not sure what it's supposed to taste like. It looks black, but it doesn't taste like anything. But I think with the mixture of marinara, it actually blends it better. This is a big prawn. Really nicely cooked, really tender, very juicy and soft. I think this actually captures the flavor of the squid ink more because I feel like for pasta, it doesn't really, you can't really tell. I've never heard of this smart pizza before. There is ham with mushrooms and like a sunny side egg with a lot of cheese. Ooh. Yeah. This definitely looks like a breakfast. Pizza. If you roll the pizza up like this and eat it as like a calzone or you just eat it as like a flat pizza. I'm deeply offended by this stereotype. Mm. So I like that the dough is 
thin crusted. It's a good pizza to have, like if you enjoy your egg and your cheese and your ham. The taste is there, the filling is substantial, and the cheese is really yummy. So we're gonna have Sean, the owner of Bella Italia, to just come chat with us about the dishes that you prepared. My late dad actually started a restaurant in Batam. Back in the early 2010s, there was a lack of proper Italian food or proper Western food in Batam. Yeah. And so he saw that gap and he's like, okay, let's do it. Uh, actually, fast forward 11 years, then was the whole COVID and whatnot, and then we moved into Singapore. Oh, okay. um, we started off small with just me and my mom uh, in a hawker style shop, right. like a food truck thing at yeah. uh, Ayuraja. And then from then, it was we were invited to come here. The Squid Ink, you're right. A lot of people don't know what to get out of the Squid Ink. But it's there uh, as a sort of visual aspect, being completely black. But at the same time, also provides sort of salinity and brininess from the ocean. Okay. Uh, or the squid in general into the dish itself. But why I chose to have it with marinara. So you still see a few tinges of red here and there from the marinara sauce. Mm -hmm. The tanginess of the tomato and the basil is supposed to sort of complement the Squid Ink so it's not too heavy. My aim was a lot of the dishes was to bring as much tradition as I can to the table mm. and then tweak it a little bit to meet the local taste profile. Uh, the painting that Joy was talking about was done by Jackie. We went to school together. That small building at the top is actually the exact image reimagined by the artist of the first restaurant we had in Bata. Yeah. This old man is, a, is the artist's impression of my late dad. Oh, yeah. that's sweet. Lastly, they do have a promo going on right now. So if you follow them on Facebook or Instagram, just show that you're following them and you will get a free tiramisu or calamari. So choose wisely. We are in the heart of Tilakair and we're checking out a really, really new restaurant that just opened four months ago called Chico Pasta. Started by chef Drew No Chente, who is Australian-Italian. They actually have a sister restaurant called Chenzo or Senzo down the street that is a bit more elevated, more atas. So what they're offering at Chico Pasta is more affordable pasta. So if you're in the heart of CBD, like working around, you want to take a break for lunch, you can come here and check out their pasta. It's hard to find affordable things in CBD nowadays. We have the cauliflower here which is made with garlic chili sauce. It's a huge head. Then we have the squid here made with pepper ketchup and herbs. So these two dishes are part of like the Italian street food section of the menu. I also have here ta -da, my lemon cello. I've been looking for this everywhere. Oh wow. Oh my god, it's so strong. It's almost like an Aperol spritz, but with lemoncello. This looks great. I love the little splatter decoration that they've done with the sauces. Makes it look like it came from the streets. And the squid pieces are very, very generous. I actually really like the sauce. Even though it says it has ketchup, but it doesn't really taste like ketchup. It's my older version. It's almost like a um, sriracha, but not so spicy. It tastes really well with the squid. And we have some of these herbs here. Maybe it's like a little bit of a pesto. A little bit sour, sweet, tangy, and with some olive oil as well. Moving on to the cauliflower, I'm quite excited about this one. Gonna get a bit of that garlic sauce. Mm. So the sauce is a garlic chili sauce, but I feel like there's a bit of nuttiness flavor to this as well. Also a little bit spicy because of the chili. The cauliflower texture is not too, it's not mushy, it's just the right amount of like hardness and softness. I think they probably grilled it, as you can see here, from a little bit of the charness. Ooh, so this is what they're known for, the pasta here. There is a spanner crab and bisque pasta, which is this one. It's called the Mafaldine. And then this one, I believe, is the mushroom and duja. What's a duja? I'll figure out later. So the name of this dish is giggly. Kind of like gigolo. I'm gonna dig into the mushroom one first. Well, the enduja is the pork saucy song and it's infused in with the sauce so you don't actually see the sausages. But the main part is the mushroom. Mm, first of all, the pasta texture is great. Chewy. Need to figure out the name of this pasta. But it's I can take. Oh, the pasta is called giggly. Ah. I think there's like a really earthy flavor because of the mushrooms. And then a little bit of the meat flavor because of the pork saucy song. Moving on to the muffaldine. Oh, this crab paste, crab meat paste. Somehow just. Mixed with the pasta itself, I think because the sauce itself is not too thin, like thicker than expected as you can see here. It works well with the ribbon pasta because it doesn't fall off, so it kind of gets 
captured within the creases of the pasta. And I like that because there's a lot of flavor in this just one small piece. If you love crab, you have to try this one out. There's a lot in here. Both of these pasta dishes are actually quite simple. Like they're not trying to overdo it with the number of toppings or the sauces or anything like that. It feels very fresh and clean, which is what I like from pastas. I'm here with Chris, the chef of Chico Pasta. Okay, so previously I was actually from Kuto. Oh, okay. Uh, which is uh, our sister outlet. We do uh, Spanish flyers and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So basically when Chico opened up, I came over uh, okay. as a pioneer chef from here. For this particular dish, the Anduia, right? The sauce is actually derived from uh, Sobra Sada which is actually a uh, Spanish uh, a minced meat. We basically just boil that minced meat in water and then after that we get um, a layer of oil and water. So that's where the sauce actually comes from. Oh, thank you so much for Thanks sharing a it. bit and sure, um, see you again. <laughs> Alright, cheers guys. Thanks. To wrap up Chico Pasta, I would say that my favorite part of the four dishes is definitely the crab mafaldine. At first taste, it just surprised me. It wowed me because I was kind of expecting like a normal crab pasta as what you would normally expect. But the creaminess and the the crab meat, amount of crab meat with the pasta just works really well. And then we're gonna head off to the next spot. Well, hello there. We're now at the third spot of the day. We are at Travato, very neighborhoody housing estate in the Yochukan area. So what's cool about them is that they actually have their own brick fire oven for the pizzas. And it's a very cozy, contemporary neighborhood spot. So let's go check it out. So we have the first dish here, which is the burrata salad. Looks very appetizing and I like that it comes with that balsamic glaze that they just added on. Looks like a very typical burrata salad with your basil and your cherry tomatoes. Mm -mm. Oh wow. So there's some sort of like green glaze underneath in the salad and it's a bit different from your typical salad. Or I can taste the glaze from the balsamic, but they also have this like pesto, basil, olive oil going on here. Super refreshing salad. Usually people just put the balsamic glaze and that's it, but they have this like special sauce underneath um, that makes it a lot more refreshing and also sweet. So the oysters that just dropped onto my table um, are called oysters al forno. They're baked. I can see that there's some spinach in there, a bit of cheese. It was at this moment that he knew. It's big and it's hot. That's what she said. <laughs> okay, I wouldn't recommend eating it all on its own. It's not like a regular oyster that you would just swallow it whole. You have to eat it little bits by bits. So it does come with some onions and the bacon bits and the spinach. It's a cheese gratin on top with Mornay sauce. Overall, pretty delicious. I'm not usually a fan of like baked oysters. I love it fresh just by its own seafoody taste, but this is creamy. This is, yeah, this is really juicy actually. We are now onto the pasta. This one is called the beef tortellini pasta. It's made with a spinach um, infused dough on the outside with ground beef on the inside. Hmm, tastes like a tortellini bolognese kind of pasta dish. I like that at least the shell of it is al dente, but the beef on the inside is pretty uh, cooked. A bit sour it's because of the tomato sauce. The taste comes through through the pasta dough. Overall, not bad, not bad. I would say it's a good dish. It's more tomato-y. For example, the burrata salad, I could really taste the basil come out really, really strong. But for this one, not so much. And now we're getting ready for the pizza. Oh, wow. Why is it black? What is going on here? There's so many ingredients and things happening on this pizza. It's the Travato special pizza. I'm told that there are four different flavors all in one on a charcoal crust. The special pizza changes based on chef's choice of ingredients. So maybe one time you'll come, you'll get something else. I like that the egg is sitting in like a little crater in the crust. Okay, I'll try the prosciutto one first. Crust is um interesting. I don't know how to explain it. It's like charcoal crust. It definitely has like taste of, I don't know, like a grainy charcoal smoky taste in the crust. Okay, overall the ingredients on top is like what you would expect, the cheese, the prosciutto, and the egg. But I think the weird part that is makes this pizza unique is definitely the crust. It's a very different taste from normal pizza crust. Ooh, okay, now I'm gonna try the salmon one. The salmon reminds me of the smoked salmon that I used to eat back in Canada because we have fresh salmon over there. Pretty good quality and it's really thick pieces. I think I prefer this one over the previous one because I think the flavors just combine really well with the crust. Mm, the salmon is smoky, it's sweet with the cheese on the bottom. This is a good one. We're moving on to the vegetarian pizza. Mm. 
smoky. I think it's like grilled, right? Grilled vegetables mixed with cheese. For a vegetarian, it's a good option because there's loads of vegetables. Like sometimes the vegetarian pizzas are really thin and they don't have a lot of vegetables on there. It's a lot of pizzas. I'm literally eating four slices. I feel like there's some seafood in the cheese as well. I think it's a bit of a squid. Mm, the problem is not too overcooked, which is nice. I would say that I'm a bit hesitant or I don't know how do I feel about the seafood pizza because first of all, I don't like seafood on pizza. Personally, I still think the salmon is the best even though it is still fish seafood. But I think just the texture, the taste, the sweetness of the salmon really mixes well with the pizza crust. I think overall, I really like the ambiance of this place. It's like a really cute neighborhoody spot. And that's it for today. So we're gonna do a quick roundup next. Bye. We have ended today's Italian episode, hidden away spots under the radar, cozy places. I actually really am impressed by the standards of Italian food that I've had today. From, you know, really humble, small restauranteurs to obviously pretty well-known chefs as well. Typically, I don't find pasta to be so exciting, but today, two of my top three dishes are actually pasta. The crab mafaldine uh, from Chico Pasta. I really like the paccheri from the first restaurant which is Bella Italia. I really like the baked oysters from the third place, Travalto. So if you have other cultural cuisines that you would like us to try or check out, let us know, comment below. We love to hear. I will respond to you personally in the comment section. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe if you like this video. I just had a complete carb load up today so now I'm gonna go run it off with a half marathon. Okay, bye. The chef started his cooking or his love for Italian food because of his dad who's Italian um, and they... <clears throat> yeah, that's it. I don't have nothing to say anymore. <laughs>